Hi everybody, Nightmare on Scam Street here. Um, this is going to be an instructional video for people who've got Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and the Phoenix A320 aircraft. I'm going to go through how to get the aircraft flight ready from cold and dark. This is the basic state of the aircraft when it's parked. There's no power to the aircraft. The only power that may be there um, would be available from the external generators are the batteries and all of those will be switched off. So the idea is to get ready to fly but first of all of course we need to know where we're going to fly so I'm going to talk you through using Simbrief which is a, a great free flight planning software to get your flight set up, how to import that into Flight Simulator, and then how to get the aircraft from a um, cold and dark parked state into ready to taxi to the runway. So I recorded the actual flight a few days ago so we'll use this one and let's see how it goes. I may add a few comments just to clear things up though. What I thought I'd do today is talk you through how to set up a flight for the Phoenix or the fly-by-wire A320. The first step is to get yourself um, Simbrief. It's a free download. That's S-I-M-B-R-I-E-F by Navigraph. And I'm assuming that you know how to install it. Um, if anybody has any problems, just drop me a line on um, nightmarelines at gmail.com and I'll help you through that. So we've clicked on New Flight, which puts all the boxes back to default and lets us enter our own information. The first thing, we might as well go through these just in order. The airline I'm choosing is NOS, and it's 5 for me. That makes NOSS, as you know, Nightmare on Scam Street. For this particular flight, I'm going to be um, leaving Liverpool. So that's EGGP. And we're going to Dublin, which I know, without looking it up, is EIDW, because I spend so much time there. The alternate airport, you can choose yourself, but it'll pick one for you. So you could actually just ignore that if you're, if you're a beginner. If you're more into it, you can go down and have a look at the map, and you'll see that um, if you can't get into Dublin, they want you to go to Prestwick, which to me sounds ridiculous. That's, that's far too big a detour, especially when you've got other airports in, in, um, Ireland. You could, for example, go to, um, yeah, you could go to Belfast which would be closer, EGAD is that? So you can choose the, your own alternative, EGAD is Belfast, so in fact we'll do that, we'll put Belfast in as a alternative instead of this. It'll set the date and time slightly forward of where you are in Zulu. Uh, you've got to remember this program works in Zulu, which is Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Time. It can be confusing when you first start having to work out how many hours different you are from Zulu, but don't worry, it's not complicated. Um, then we need to tell the um, 
what type of aircraft we're using and I've already put this in as my uh, Phoenix the aircraft editor lets you change the database and um, that's all fairly straightforward you don't need to worry about that once your aircraft is in it's done I always leave all of this as normal I don't touch it at all and um, then we've got the runways that we're going to depart from now because we're departing from Liverpool I don't think we want to depart on runway 9 it seems a strange runway to take off from from Liverpool I think we'll change that to 27 and arriving in 28 in Dublin is absolutely fine um, I always put my friend's name in there now this gives us our route WAL is Wallasey and then this is the path over the Irish Sea. Bagzo and Bags 2X are the star points, the arrivals going into Dublin. And if we have a look on the map, we'll see here's our route. The routes are never usually straight lines. They, they change around they, they make way for other aircraft and things like that, um, other airways. So we're okay with that route. So what we're going to do now is click on Generate Flight. And what that does now, that stores that flight in um, Simbrief's own storage location and the only other thing we'd need to do is to save it as a flight sim 2020 flight and we can just click on download and it'll download down there now the thing is simbrief does a reasonably good job of planning a flight but it's not terribly accurate when you are trying to put that flight into your uh, MacDo later, the um, display control display unit, the flight details are hardly ever the same, and you'll find you'll need to make changes. and And this is the reason for making this video to help you work out what changes need to be made. But from this flight plan, we're going to need to take a few bits of information. Um, the first thing we want to do is get this thing called CI and make a note of that. CI stands for Cost Index. And that's basically a rough estimate of... It's like saying what miles per gallon you're going to get more, more or less. It isn't that, but that's more or less... Um, as we go down here, we'll see the fuel discussions or the, the documentations about the fuel and it will come up with something called block fuel, which is how much fuel is predicted to be needed in the plane. So that's 4.1, 4.1. I never round up or round down. If it says 4.199, I'll still call it 4.1. Um, that way, I'm never being over hopeful. I've always got a little bit extra there. And the only other thing we want to find on this, as we scroll down, we'll actually come to the, the flight plan itself. 
and we'll see these numbers 45 91 193 220 220 220 220 so 220 is our actual cruise height that's the height we'll get to and we'll not go any higher than that during the flight so just to re resume this just to review rather I'll start again and we'll do it more quickly this time so new flight we're going to go our NOS 5 we're going from EGGP we're going to EIDW we're not particularly bothered what the alternate is because um, we're not going to worry about that time's okay tell it what type of aircraft we have these are all okay cell call by the way is something you only need if you're going transatlantic or transpacific and we've got our flight same as before except that we don't want to be taking off well let's leave it taking off on runway 90 we'll see what happens yeah so generate flight this is going to overwrite the flight that we just put in so it's always the most recent one and now we want to save it for flight sim 2020 if you're using VAT sim if you know what that is you're probably ahead of me VAT sim is um, a system of air traffic controllers people who are using their computer simulating that they're an air traffic controller makes it so much more fun honestly it is the absolute brilliant thing but before you use that you have to file a um, a flight with them pre-file a flight so VATSIM you would go onto the pre-file VATSIM network and then your flight would be stored on their system ready to uh, ready to be used so we've done our uh, basic planning this part here I'm probably going to get rid of that and just go straight there and then into Dublin I'll show you how we do that when we get inside the plane so Flight Sim has started up and this is where we're at. So if we go to world map, there's a menu, there's a space menu which opens up some more options for you. And one of them is load and save. So if you click on load, save, load from this PC and go to your download section you'll see I've got millions of them here this is EGGP EIDW and that's our flight so as you can see that's where our flight appears now this takeoff on runway 90 isn't really um, doable we're going to go less than the full length of the runway and then do a sharp angled reverse swoop so I'm actually going to change that to um, first of all I'm going to change it to um, that we're parked at a gate rather than on a runway the problem is if we if we start off on the runway the airplane will be all ready to go and that's not part of the instructions for today let's just park at ramp 53 set that as the departure So what's happened now, we're going to the uh, eastern end of the runway and we're going to be using runway 27. So we've got to tell it what departures we want to do now.
these departures and arrivals are listed in the navigation maps that you can find on sites like Navigraph or um, ChartsFox. ChartsFox is a good one. Um, I'll show you quickly. If we go to chart chartfox.org There we go. Um we want to look at EGGP So this will give you some maps of the airport charts I should say SIDS are st standard instrument departures so we could put that one on and it will show us we have to turn them around the right way often so that departure isn't going to give us much help because no matter which part of the runway we take off from, which we're head, uh, which runway we're heading east, and we don't want to head east. This one's the same. This is uh, a probable. This is Wrexham. As you can see, no matter which runway we take off from, we're always going to end up down here. But I think the Wallacey one might be the best one. So the Wallacey SID takes us Whichever one we take off from, we're going to end up here over Wallasey, an area of Liverpool. So really, it's a case of Wallasey or Wrexham. I think uh, Wallasey is probably okay. We need this information in a moment when we get onto the plane. So we're going to be departing Wallasey 27 and that's changed the shape of that for us. If we'd have picked the Wrexham one we'd be down here somewhere so that's the right, that's the right one to choose. Now we're going to be coming into Dublin and we know we're approaching on ILS 28 left. Now this has actually got rid of most of these for us. This ring of um, of waypoints. Let's see if we can choose a slightly more gentle curve. See, as you change the curves, the uh, result is completely different that'll do now the imperative thing now is to write this down because you can't go back to this so we're leaving um, Liverpool on runway 20, runway uh, 28 and we're going to be doing the oh sorry runway 27 apologies and we're going to be doing the WAL2T departure and in Dublin we're going to be arriving ILS 28 left and we're going to be using the bags 2L now those are important because we've got to actually program the airplane's own guidance system with this information 
And if we didn't have it to hand after we leave this page, we won't get it. It's not easy to find. So, we're at the basic uh, map. If we click fly now, it'll take us to the place on the airport that we asked to be sighted at, which is actually at um, one of the parking bays. And when you're flying um, f the VAT, the Phoenix aircraft, you have to have um, the Phoenix app running as well. If you don't have the Phoenix app running, then the uh, Phoenix app will do all sorts of odd things and won't do the things you want it to do. So this is us at our parking area. If we have a look around in a moment. Click ready to fly. NOS 5 November Oscar, Sierra 5 IFR to Dublin ready to copy. Let me get rid of this map. NOS 5 November Oscar, Sierra 5, cleared to Dublin airport as filed. Take off runway. You'll notice I've got automatic ATC on. Um, on 118.775.5146. There's two cheats I use, and one of them is the uh, co-pilot or first officer working the comms for me so we've come into the aircraft i'll just switch those off again to show you we've come into the aircraft and um we're presented with this view out of the window but we've got to get the airplane f powered up so we need to go to the overhead panel the overhead panel is literally as it sounds. It's over the head of the uh, pilot and co-pilots in the centre. I'll apologise for, for using the word co-pilot. I should be calling them first officer. My mistake. So, in the middle here is a sort of power system. And these two are the batteries. This is the, the aircraft's batteries. They are both off at the moment although there's no indication to show that they're off now, airbus has a very interesting system to um, show when things are on or off uh, in fact if a system is switched off then the uh, button is lit up with an white off symbol um, and it's one of the ways to do the checklist is to go through the buttons and those that are switched off are shown up as white and need to be switched on. Once the system is actually turned on, the button goes dark, which is a sort of opposite way to what you'd think. With these two battery buttons both being dark, it's not obvious what the setting is. But of course there's no power to, on the plane to show what the settings are yet so until you turn on at least one battery it's impossible to know what systems are on and off so you assume that if, if both the battery lights are off and nothing else is lit up that the batteries are off uh, and, and that's demonstrated when you turn the first battery on confused you will be in the configuration we're in now, there is actually only one light and that is the external power and that is to show that it's available. Um, that's not on, that's or off, it's just available to us at the moment. I'm going to switch on the first battery. Suddenly battery 2 shows off. Right, so we've got both batteries switched on. Um, we've got external power, which is from the uh, generator outside the aircraft. So we'll turn that on and that'll light up quite a lot of the display. We've got two routes we can go down right now. Some things need to be done fairly quickly because they take some time to operate. So I'm going to turn on these three switches. That's pilot, first officer and back up. These are our inertial guidance system. Very, very important. 
but it takes about 10 minutes to settle down to stabilize what I've done here is I switched on the cruise oxygen supply um, the cruise oxygen supply is supplied by a bottle and there's a couple of uh, sockets one on each, a couple on each side of the um, aircraft in the cabin and the captain and first officer can plug their breathing masks into that but if it's left just with the breathing mask plug there's a slow leak and it can lose oxygen so it's definitively turned off by a valve and when you come into the aircraft you have to turn that valve on this is the cockpit voice recorder normally it's triggered automatically once the engines are running but the law says that you have to also record everything that's said in the cockpit before engine startup so that's what this button does and this button here just tests it if I press and hold it that beep tells you that the test was okay and we can test our fire alarms And there's a smoke alarm here right we're going to put our emergency signs to arm we're going to put the no smoking signs to auto planes are required to have no smoking signs still although some have swapped them over to electronic devices Because we're fueling, we're not going to touch the seatbelt signs yet. All right, the next step I want to do is to get into the little control tablet and start the loading process because if we don't start the loading process, it's going to take longer. When we click on this tap here, tap to import from Simbrief is actually going to bring in the latest Simbrief flight the one that we just saved now I'm going to have to work this out with you this is it says that our estimated off blocks time is 60 minutes so we can make our flight later let's change it to Um, when ready. Seven forty. That's it. That'll do. Anywhere in the twenty twenty five minutes band is fine. So then we can go to mass and balance, and we want to click on load aircraft. Now we can make it take real time, or just do it in a fast time. I I normally click fast time because I'm quicker at getting things done. Back here, a couple of things we want to double check. Um, we want to check the weather at our arrival airport. So we know that the QNH is um, 1010. The temperature is 16. And the wind is 320 at 06 knots. I'm writing these I've got a list I'll show you the list um, as a cut out in the video so now we're, we're um, filling up the airplane so we can go down to the pedestal and we've got to set in our the information that Liverpool told us for takeoff so the first one I'm going to do is the squawk five one four six and clear out the existing five one four six 
it doesn't tell you that it's working but you've got to set these switches off of standby that one was on standby TA is um, traffic alert and RA something I, I normally just switch that one to TA RA the uh, next thing to do is the radar so we set that switch to position one set that switch to auto and I normally switch that to WXT hazard sounds a bit strange but don't worry that's all we need oh and we'll pop up the ground spoiler the next step is to go to the main control part of the aircraft which is called the MCDU which you hear most people calling the McDo we go to initialize so we're going to request the initialization put in our flight number you should get that in just as the initialization comes through there you go cost index now we wrote that down from somewhere before that is 15 and our cruise height is 220 220 so that's this page finished up at the top you'll see there's some arrows and that'll tell you there's another page to do but we can't get this information yet because the aircraft hasn't finished boarding and fueling so we'll go to our flight plan we said that from Liverpool we were going to depart on runway 27 and we were going to go to the um, wall 2T we go up to the other end of the flight plan Edinburgh, oh uh, sorry, Dumplin arrive ILS 28 left and we're arriving as bags 2L bags 2L insert that means our flight plan is now set up in the um, in the McDo We were originally told to go up to 12,000 feet, so we'll go here and set our 12,000 feet. Let's see how our loading is going. Oh, we've completed. Fine. So the zero fuel weight is on the left here, 53.727, 53.727, and the CG that we need to know about is this one, and it's 28.8, 28.8. Now we've got to use one of the tools supplied to calculate our takeoff speeds. So we know that we're taking off from EGGP. We're going to be taking off from runway 27. I think the surface is dry. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, it looks dry to me. Nice sunny day. By the way, my uh, aircraft's livery was um, specially designed for me, and uh, I'm so impressed with it. I love the livery. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, the guy who did the livery for me in 
the comments down below so flaps config we normally do flaps one we're not going to use toga which is the highest power we're going to just use um, flex takeoff power we don't need anti-icing the packs are on packs are the um, air conditioning units there are three of them and um, they control the temperature in the the front middle and back of the aircraft you will hear when you sat on the ground and you hear that noise of air rushing out of the air vents and you can turn on your little air vent and it it blows masses of air all over you um, just before takeoff you'll suddenly often hear those go quiet and that's because they've turned off these air conditioning packs it saves energy basically that's all there is all it is in uh, nightmare lines we don't care about that we care about customer comfort so we're going to grab these two numbers from the um, from the final figures that's let's just press that we're going to get the live weather and then we just press calculate and it will tell us V1 is 123 VR is 135 and V2 is 135 flaps are 1 slash up 0.2 flex is 68 and the acceleration is 1080 right I'll explain some of those V1 this is an interesting speed up to that speed you can decide to abort the takeoff um, you can s turn the engines back reverse thrust full brakes and you'll stop before the end of the runway but once you've gone past V1 you can't stop you have to commit to taking off and the reason is that there won't be enough runway left for you to actually stop you'll end up off the end of the runway VR is the rotation speed um, commonly V1 and VR are in the same area but it depends on the weather it depends on lots of things VR is when you pull the um, control stick back and start to actually get the nose of the aircraft up in the air so that's VR V2 is the safest minimum speed that you can do a single engine takeoff so let's say you had an engine explode on takeoff providing you're at speed 135 you should be able to carry on um, this number here refers to the flap settings and this number here refers to the the temperature that you're allowed to go up to under, under flex control I'll show you that in a little while and this is the um, acceleration or thrust reduction that you get depending on whether you've got both engines running or one engine running so important little thing this to c calculates a lot of information for you now we've got to put that into the McDo I take notes all the time and literally about a quarter of the page is taken up just with the list of things to put into the McDo so if we go back to init and go to the second page we know the zero fuel weight now which is 53.7 and then there's a slash and the, and the uh, center of gravity is 28.8 20 
8.8 pop that in the block is how much fuel we're getting in and for this uh, it was 4.1 What you'll see happen now is this will start to populate these uh, fields here. There we go, it started populating them. We need to also get the details of the wind at different altitudes. And uh, because, as you know, the wind can change, so this gives us direction and strength of wind at different altitudes so that's the init section done now we go to performance which is where we enter the takeoff details so he said that v1 was one two three vr was one three five and v2 was one three five We know that flaps was one slash up not point two and the flex temperature was sixty eight and we need to change these numbers to reflect what we've been calculated 1080 and single engine mode okay you can go into the next phase which is climb next phase cruise next phase descend next phase is the uh, approach we know from the current weather that the QNH in Dublin is 10 at 10 10 1010 we know that the temperature is 16 and we know that the wind is um, 320 at 06 320 slash 0 Six. So it's just a heading and a strength. And the last thing you put in is the final decision height. I always leave it to 200. I, I, people will probably tell me it's wrong. If I am wrong, please tell me. I don't mind. About minimum. So, so far we've got our flight plan set up. We've got our McDo completely set up. We should be pretty much ready for a flight. So, um, first thing though, we need to get some engines running. But if we request taxi, Liverpool ground, NOS five November Oscar Sierra Fife with whiskey ready to taxi IFR. NOS five November Oscar Sierra Fife taxi two and hold short of runway two seven using taxiway Alpha. Contact tower on one two six decimal three five five when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway two seven using taxiway alpha NOS five November Oscar Sierra five. This is the cheat I use is the um, taxi markers. That that and the um, first officer autopilot is not autopilot. The first officer doing the radios that's all I use um, some without going back to the maps let me show you we should have the maps in the right place so if we go to taxi uh, the t parking chart I think we're somewhere around here weren't we and it'll tell you all the different um, runways to go to this is quite a simple airport Liverpool um, we're going to be pulling out of one of these spaces I can't remember exactly which one it's not important 
and then we're going to be going along this taxiway now there are some airports where this taxiway is incredibly complicated where you might have to go through um, five or six separate runways to uh, to get to the sorry not runways taxiways to get to the um, the end of the runway so before we do anything else we need to go back up to the EFB get back to the main app and we want to disconnect all ground services so before we can do that remember right now our aircraft is running on the electrical power and um, we need to take it off of their electrical power from the ground and get it on our own electrical power so for this we use this device called the APU or auxiliary power unit it starts up in two phases so if we have a look at the back of the plane there you can see that exhaust vent and here's an inlet so there is actually a little jet engine in there which sucks air in there blows it out there and while it's going it's actually generating power in terms of electricity and hydraulics and um, so you first you have to get it ready and then you press the start button we know all our fuels on board so we can turn off the f turn on the fuel pumps now once the fuel pumps are on the passengers have to be seated might as well put some external lights on because we're going to be moving soon so if you have a look on the uh, control panel here this is the APU and you can see it's speeding up that's the EGT is its exhaust, exhaust gas temperature and N is like the speed of the main turbine and you see it's, we're now generating power and um, powering the plane so now we can get uh, overhead we can turn off the external power we no longer need that but we also have to disconnect it and we also have to get the um, cones out of the way very easy thing to forget if you forget the cones and chocks you can put full power and nothing will make you move you just will sit there it is frustrating until you suddenly realize oh what have I done so we can get ready to um, now the APU is on we can use some of its power and the other thing it does is provide a source of compressed air because the engines are powered or started up with compressed air now if you listen you'll hear the air come on in the background a sort of whoosh noise I'll be quiet for a second or two there you go that's the whoosh noise this is when you get to turn on the vent above your head and suddenly cool down as the cabins reached about 50 degrees C by then so the APU is providing us with power electrical power hydraulics and compressed air and that's what we need to start the engine or engines um, switch that to the ignition mode and then we can start engine one you hear the hiss goes down because now the compressed air is being diverted through the uh, through the engine 
while that's starting a couple of little domestic things to sort out we should have some messages from the company which would be our uh, loading sheets we actually have three ignore the the older ones it's the most recent one that you want to be concerned about right so zero fuel weight 53.7 yeah I remember that and fuel intakes 4.9 I think we said it was 4.1 or something but that's okay so we can accept that fine so if we go to the electrics you'll see we've got generator one which is actually engine one powering that side we've got the APU powering that side and generator two is is not running because the engine isn't running yet but before I start that engine we've got to do one little tidy up thing again which is the center of gravity that we worked out earlier 28.8 .8, we have to set it on here now you'll see down there's 30 and there's this little knob there you have to get roughly lined up that's 25 that's 30 so so you could call it 29 so roughly there that's just to help the aircraft take off nicely because the center of gravity will be in exactly the right place once again the sound has dropped because we are uh, taking the compressed air now from engine one and the APU and we'll see this engine suddenly come online there we go so now we've got both engines running and we can actually turn off the APU we don't need it now so right at this moment we're a fully powered fully self powered aircraft normally we would ask for a tug to push us out of the ramp but because of a mismatch between the way I personally have got flight sim set up I don't get an available tug even if I went on to ground services they'd just say no tugs available so for now just because I'm lazy I've been just reversing out of the spot right I'm going to go to external view now and I have to warn you that the external view is incredibly loud when the engines are running told you so we want to go backwards and bear around that way in fact I'm going to do it with this view so I'm going to select reverse thrust little overshoot, never mind. So now we can just follow the tracks, follow the uh, arrows to the runway. The next thing we'll have to do is get takeoff permission and we'll do that when we get to the, um, the hold point 
we'll do a couple of things when we get to the whole point we'll be checking things like our um, Q&H checking that we've got all the things set up properly for takeoff before we enter the runway the last thing you want to do is get on the runway and sit there for five minutes fiddling about with things that you should have done before so I'm steering with the tiller um, my control system is is homemade I have a really cheap joystick which just controls the um, up down left right axes um, it doesn't have a Z axis on it the throttle quadrant I made myself I'll put some pictures of that on later and perhaps some instructions how to do it but it's it's not hard it's just fiddly and um, the tiller is literally just a little piece of um, a little potentiometer with some a plastic arm on it that's about five centimeters long and I just rest the tip of my middle finger on it and guide it left and right it's very very reactive um, I've fiddled about with the gains of it so that it doesn't instantly go from one way to the other it gives you some leeway but you can steer quite accurately with it and use that on the way down the wrong way as well I do have a set of purchased um, rudder pedals because my building capabilities didn't really stretch that far um, so we're coming up to the whole point the A320 series aircraft just glide along the ground with hardly any power at all this is actually engines in idle you just need a little nudge to start it off and then away you go by the way I'm recording this rather than doing it live because as you may know our whole family has COVID right now um, all five of us living in the house and I keep having to stop for cough breaks and sneeze breaks and things like that so rather than subject you to those I've recorded this and I shall be editing those out So we're 2992. I don't Cleared know why it can't give me the correct units, but never mind. We also have to adjust this little standby barometer. Two nine nine two. So we've got to set the flaps for takeoff, which is flaps one. We've got to put the automatic braking onto maximum there. And according to that, that's all I have to those are the things I needed to do. So we can do takeoff check and it says takeoff config is normal. Which is good. That means we don't have to fiddle with anything. I'll get myself lined up for the view. I always forget to do this before we take off and end up nearly crashing on the wrong way. Move it down so I can see the speed. So we're ready for a move. I fitted um, a soft brake control. The uh, braking currently is controlled by the trigger on the joystick which is on or off it's very harsh and um, I'm sure if you're a passenger in the back of the plane your head would be going boing 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 backwards and forwards um, 
but so what I've done is I've taken one of the analog input channels on the device I've been using and converted that into a variable brake system so I can apply full braking and apply it gently not slam to a stop so we're ready to go I'm just going to take off um, so it's up to half power climb wait for the engines to stabilize something always goes ding there I don't know why up to flex and away we go so um, I've got my nose pushed down slightly and I'm steering using the tiller Okay, we're above the R, so we can take off. It's a lot harder than it looks, this, because I've got the microphone in the way. I've got um, all sorts of bits and pieces in the way when I'm trying to do, do this. No, we've instantly got... Um, autopilot engaged. Manchester Center, NOS 5 November Oscar, Sierra 5 is passing 1,700 feet, climbing 12,000 feet. NOS 5 November Oscar, Sierra 5 Manchester Center, QNH, to Niner Decimal Niner, to continue to Whiskey Alpha Lima as planned. Right, so you know that we're guy we're going up to twelve thousand feet. That there are restrictions on our flight path, which will be for noise abatement and such like. So, at the moment, we can only go as high as four thousand feet. And once we get to the next waypoint, Wallasey, we're also on four thousand. If we look down on our um, flight plan, you'll see we've got 4,000 here. When we get to past Wallasey, we can go up to 100, 177, 218, and so on. So basically, we can start our climb. But at the moment, we're restricted to uh, 4,000 feet. So at this moment, I'm going to take off the uh, recording now and we'll call that one quits. That was getting up into the air and then I'm going to switch over and carry on live on the rest of the flight to Dublin. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Um, this is Nightmare on Scam Street and on behalf of Nightmare Lines, I'd like to thank you for flying with us. Hope you've enjoyed the flight. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in the very near future when we continue our flight to Dublin and go through the landing procedures.